Folks, Saturday night, welcome aboard. Murder Hobo Inc. is live in Murder Hobo Con's venue. Thanks for joining us. Too bad you couldn't be here, uh, but we're glad that you showed up to watch the stream. Tonight's episode is going to be uh, called Confectioner's Conundrum. Uh, we should have another uh, player or maybe two joining us. We'll go ahead and go through the overview here in just a second. First, let's go ahead and introduce uh, the guys that are here. Uh, David, we'll start with you. Who are you and who are you playing tonight? Okay. Hi, I am David, the first, the voice of Murder Hobo Con. <laughs> Hi, I'm a regular on the, the cast of Murder Hobo. And tonight I will be playing Gobi, the intellectual half elf wizard. I, I thought that was me. So. Oh, you're yeah. Go you're Gobi? Yeah, he, he's Gobi, change your name, David. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so he's, so we, wizard is the character that we're we got two of then yeah well you got two rogues and two wizards right now okay so i changed goby's name is what you're saying yep you okay Goby, should we like, yeah. try to have separate character types or? uh we do but they are just now showing up <laughs> okay david what name do you want to be uh let's see you got steve the rogue right yep okay, okay. so what what don't we have uh we got the fighter uh, tyler's don't here have? or no chris dehan is the fighter david do you want so to be the have, fighter so we have a fighter two wizards and two rogues and we don't have a cleric correct okay i'll i'll give up goby send me the cleric please gotcha okay, uh, <laughs> okay. uh continue your spiel <laughs> i Hi, I'm David. I'm continuing my <laughs> spiel. <laughs> yes, folks, I am a regular on Murder Hobo. I play in the Cacophony uh, edition, also in the Calamity campaign. Uh, I play Zadar in uh, Cacophony, and I play uh, yeah, Ingve and Crow in both the Calamity and A and Calamity B side. Also, uh, we have a show called Between the Roles. I'm usually a regular on there, but one thing that we are run, running right now is called The Socium Project, and that is our Iron DM episodes where we take a turn at world building. We come on about every two weeks uh, with a Socium episode, and uh, you get to watch us live go over our nation building and things like that. So we, uh, we are, what, Frank, what, in our third week of this coming up? Mm -hmm. uh, the Socium up. Project, and yeah, it's going to be ongoing. Uh, we, we continue throughout the year, and then towards the end of the year, we are actually going to have a live playthrough uh, with it. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will be published too. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Frank's got big aspirations. So I got a big ass too. Carrie, you're up next. Who are you? Who are you playing tonight? Cool playing uh, John LaPointe, you're up. I am playing Shakes, the human rogue thief, background urchin. Nicely done. Tyler, do we hear you now? Uh, can you hear me now? It says it's yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now we can hear you. All right. Uh, um, Tyler, I sent you a message. Uh, if you go to the left and see the envelope, go ahead and shoot me your email address. You will be playing a fighter. I'll let you introduce yourself as soon as I get it sent. Yep, and we, uh, and we will. Yeah. And I will stop moving around. And Ken, Ken, yes, who I'm, are you? Who are you playing? I, I'm Ken. I'm, I'm playing Kelly, who's the um, Hill Dwarf cleric. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. You're, you aren't going to spice him up or anything. Well, I mean, I don't. I just got him like a minute ago when I said maybe we shouldn't have two wizards. Ah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just going to mess with you anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, yeah, it's. it's I, I'm wondering what deities you got. Uh, any deity that you want. I am so flexible. I should be at the I mean, it's, right now. I, I mean, I could pick something easy, like say, I don't know, Thor, but I don't like know 
like what what world is this? Is this like Forgotten Realms or something? Or uh, no, this is a homebrew. If you want, you can be uh, a patron of Jeebus Crisp, the Cheese God. Uh, Tyler, you got a email. Okay. Right now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he likes cheese. Tyler, uh, who likes Jeebus? <laughs> All right. So I've got uh, Smooker, the uh, half orc fighter. Nice. He uh, he has been played by John before, so I know yes. you'll play better than John. I know. I, just, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, I should mention that uh, I've only been playing D and D for about six or seven months at this point. So mm. we'll see how this goes. Oh, so you're, you're overqualified now. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be better than David. Okay, yeah. guys, here's the scoop. Uh, you guys are in the city of Kakaf. Oh, one second. Sure. Um, it says on my sheet. Ideal find and aid a demigod. So wouldn't that imply I don't have a god yet? Sure. I'm open. I'm trying to find a god. No, uh, that, that was find and aid. I guess I could have a god and find the demigod. Um, yeah, maybe that's your mission. Maybe G maybe Jeebus Chris wants you to find a cracker deity. Okay. Because he's, I'll a, do cheese, that. he's a cheese god, so you gotta have uh, cheese mm -hmm. and crackers. That you know, that's that's actually actually instead of instead of crackers, let's make it like wine or ale, and even there you go. Uh, I need Vintner. to find an ale god. That's right. <laughs> okay, so you guys have been hired by the Adventurers Guild in Cacophony. Apparently, a confectioner, a candy maker, uh, is a little bit low on supplies. He sent out his most trusted naval commander, Captain Hart, uh, to go down to Cherub Island which you see below you, uh, shaped like a cherub, because, you know, why not? It's Valentine's Day almost. Uh, there is a specific cacao uh, down here on this island, and only Captain Hart has been transporting it up to the confectioner. Since Captain Hart is MIA, uh, they are going to turn you over to Captain Candy. Her name is Candace, but she goes by Candy. She is going to take you down to Confectioner's Island. Uh, you are going to go to the factory and figure out where the heck all your chocolate's at. Problem one, Captain Candy doesn't know where it's at. <laughs> Problem number two, uh, Captain Candy doesn't know what's on the island. Problem number three... You don't know what you're doing because you've never been to this island before and there are no maps in town. So fortunately, uh, somebody has sketched out Cherub Island, uh, probably a drunk and probably doesn't know what he's talking about, but at least he sketched it out correctly, you hope. So uh, you guys set sail uh, on the SS Candy Kiss uh, with Captain Candy and you guys head south. So you'll be coming from this top row of cameras that everybody sees uh discuss this amongst yourselves where do you want to land is don't know dock? don't know uh I, I look at my wizard does the wizard have a familiar uh <laughs> is he a flying familiar well if, if we got 10 minutes if we got see if there's a dock if we got 10 minutes, then yeah, I can summon a familiar because, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not a, I'm a ritual I was thinking, caster. Like, maybe you already had one and you could fly it over the island and look around. Okay, let's it'll, see. It'll take you a couple hours to get to the island, so you guys will have more than enough time. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's only I'll, a one-day trip, though, because this I'll is a two-hour show. I'll start working on a familiar. <laughs> okay. Uh, the closer you get, you see the land mass. You guys will be approaching uh, right about here next to this uh, microphone. So you'll be coming in on the northeastern corner uh, from Cacophony, which is due north straight up. Uh, the question lies, how far can your familiar fly and you still have control over it? I, I think that's what three miles or something like that. So, so one hex, one hex. Yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, the island is not very big, but it is densely packed. From your vantage point, you guys can see a lot of jungle growth, uh, and not everywhere is going to be a landing spot. So, oh. uh, David, 
or I'm sorry, yeah, David, uh, go ahead and start to move to where you want to be. Okay. Uh, uh, are you guys going to be able to hear me from anywhere on the island? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> Come on back if you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, right, everybody, everybody in agreement that uh, you guys want to face the south end? Did we see a dock there? Uh, well, when his familiar returns, uh, he saw a settlement there, not really a dock. Do they have a dock? Mm -hmm. You don't know. I'm sure the the ship has yeah, a launch so we could always anchor and launch okay way. let's go there then okay Where? do they have like ships there that show that lights like safe to land ships there what there did were, Harry see <laughs> uh, Harry, uh harry saw a, a damaged village oh yeah oh. the village is damaged looks uh looks like it you was you surface people know more about ships anyway uh, Chris, welcome aboard. You are playing a fighter, correct? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you uh, are the second fighter present. You guys are coming to Confection or coming to uh, Cherub Island to figure out why the chocolate has stopped flowing. You have a replacement <laughs> captain and a replacement ship. You guys have arrived. David has sent his wizard familiar over the land base. Uh, David, you have seen ruins a shipwreck and a damaged village uh, in that order. So the shipwreck is in the sound right next to Tyler, only a little bit deeper. The ruins are right next to the raised green area. And then the area that you stood is an area with a damaged village. So correct me if I'm wrong. You guys want to sail around and come in the south port port and go into the village, correct? Uh correct. If we're all in accord with that, then that would be the answer. <laughs> that would be an affirmative for uh uh Gobi, but he would probably caution against taking the ship any closer due to the shipwreck. Well, the shipwreck is closer to you guys. Oh, okay. The, the shipwreck is in the sound right about... Here. Okay. So that's where the shipwreck is. Uh, the raised portion in the lower center, those are mountains. Uh, that is where ruins are at. Oh, okay. Uh, but where you, where you moved... Was the that, south port. Yeah. That's the, the south port, no dock, damaged village. Okay. So, well, virtual. I'm going to iterate this uh, to the captain and the crew. Let them know what I saw and saying we're going to make a port on the south side. That would be probably our closest place to land. Uh, otherwise, uh, if not, there is this this uh, this shoal area with uh, a shipwreck that might be approachable so yeah, yeah so that's you the all launch. Have, you all have a long yeah. boat yeah so okay. the destroyed village sure <laughs> an hour later you guys come in uh david d12 <clears throat> david d12 against me okay uh let's see that's always fun uh, that would be an eight. Eight. Good news. It's cloudy, but it is not raining yet. Uh, as you guys <laughs> uh, circle around the island, you come into a shallow cove. Uh, you guys let the launch down. Captain Candy gives you the thumbs up. Uh, you assume she's going to wait for you. Uh, and you guys head out in the longboat. Everybody roll a straight up D20, please. 12 17 for go 17 as well 2 6 
Uh, Tyler and Christopher, you guys suck as naval guys, uh, and it takes you some time to get the hang of the oars. So, Tyler and Christopher, please re-roll to see if you're getting any better. 17. Nine. <laughs> nice christopher uh not getting the hang of it but you're getting the hang of it enough that you guys are kind of going straightish uh, sorry y'all i just woke up <laughs> uh, long day yesterday right. no, man, i'm holding a big wooden stick i'm hitting someone with it <laughs> pretty big words for the guy who couldn't steer first <laughs> as you guys start to make sure uh clearly the water gets a little bit more shallow it's a little cleaner you see pools of fish real fish not angry fish or anything like that uh, ahead of you on a sandy beach is what appears to be uh kind of a primitive village uh kind of adobe walls thatched uh roof uh, this is this is kind of subtropical. Think uh, Florida, Miami, Florida in December. Uh, so it's not super hot, uh, but it's warm enough. Uh, you guys can disembark by jumping into the water uh, or just full steam ahead and beach that boat, hoping that you don't break it. <laughs> ah. We can we can breach it. We can uh, hit that sand. The boat can take it. Agreed. Oh, uh, you know what? I like Chris's go-to attitude. Chris, go ahead and D12 against me. Uh, for yeah, I'm not going to argue. I use, <laughs> I use D12 a lot. Seven. Eleven. Yeah, Seven. you uh, hit a rock. Oh. Everybody oh. make dexterity checks to see if you get pitched into the water face first. Well, it looks like I'm going to get those... Uh, Natural 20. Spider Five. Five. Bonus. Uh, Total of six. Bonuses here. Wow. Five. It's minus one, so 19. Five, six, and eight. Each one of you pitch forward face first into the sand and suffer one hit point of damage uh, courtesy of beaching the boat. <laughs> but... <laughs> It, you know, at least it's not France. So, A, you've made landfall. B, only some of you got hurt. And C... I've uh, heard rumors about for the French being cheese eaters. <laughs> well, <laughs> there, there you have it. So, you know, you might find the sub-deity that you're looking for. Uh, also... <laughs> Don't talk about David that way. Uh, <laughs> more good news. Uh, nobody comes out to greet you, so at least there aren't head hunting cannibals here right yeah. now. Just in, ca I, just I wanna... in case there are head ca uh, head hunting cannibals, maybe I should sneak into the village and look around before the whole party comes charging in. One of the rogues wants to sneak in. What say the party? Sure. Better you than me. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bro, I need a little chance to wake up. They have your back from a very long distance, John. Well, okay. Uh, I, rolled, I rolled. I rolled. I rolled the two, <laughs> so that's a nine total. So you strapped metal pans to your body and climbed <laughs> up the beach, is what I'm hearing. Uh, John, an eerie silence hangs over the structures of this small village. Farming utensils are strewn about with overturned carts of black tar-like substances splattered about. You also notice footprints in the sand indicating either dance moves or a chaotic series of events with several trails leading out of the village in the sand into the jungle undergrowth. What, what does the black substance smell like? Uh, you have to approach to smell it first. Do you I want to go up there with Clangin', Clangin' John? <laughs> You can. Well, Nobody sees After anything. he comes back and tells us, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Well, or I'll before, ask him yeah. what they... Before, oh, I was just gonna say, before they do they that, spell. yeah, before we do that, can I make an investigation check in the village, see if I can find any more clues? By all means. Hmm. Okay, this time that was an 8 plus 4 <laughs> is a 12. Uh, you investigate enough to realize that Whoever lived in this village went left, 
right or up into the jungle undergrowth. Uh, straight up are hills. Left and right uh, are just heavy growth of trees. Right is a lighter growth of trees. Okay. Uh, I will report, go back to the rest of the party and report. Uh, Ken, no answer. He didn't bother to check the black substance, so you can if you want. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna say, wait a minute, that black stuff you're talking about, did you um, see what it was? Did you try to, like, smell it? or? No, I tried, to, I tried to stay w away from it. Because <laughs> it might be a clue? It might be something dangerous. Why don't you go smell it? <laughs> I'm going to actually go and smell it. Okay, Ken's going up there. Anybody else going? Yeah, I'm going to go up there. Oh, I don't yeah. wanna... oh, that can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, Tyler, did I hear you say yay? Yeah, I'll uh, head up into the village as well. Tyler, Christopher, and Ken, you guys go marching up. You see uh, John's footprints along with uh, footprints. So essentially barefoot people uh, making Nike shoes or something. Uh, you guys go up. Ken is curious about the black substance. Do you want to lean over and smell it or do you want to? Uh... I'll lean over and smell it. Very good. Give me an investigation check. Uh, hold on. Well, I'm thinking creep show. The I'd like to go ahead draft. and uh, touch it. Sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I'm not going to touch it. Sixteen. Uh, Chris, Christopher is. Uh, yeah, I'm going to touch it. It can't be that bad. Yeah, it's not like it's black pudding or anything. It's too hot to be black pudding. Uh, give me a medicine check, Ken. Uh, Christopher, uh, it feels gooey, viscous, um, dull, no sharp. Bits. The result of my medicine check is seven, and I did not say I was going to touch it. Okay. Uh, eh, you, you aren't sure what it smells like. So, can, or Christopher, did you want to smell it as well or just touch it? I'm going to go ahead and taste it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> dangerous. If it's, will, if it's uh, dangerous, I'll be able to tough it out. Sure. I will take a constitution check from you. Tyler, uh, one of your friends has sniffed it. One of your friends is eating it. What would you like to do? Um, 13. So it was on a, a – it had come off a cart and it sort of splashed around. Mm -hmm. um, I want to have a look, closer look at the cart. Okay. Give me an investigation check. Christopher, uh, you've tasted worse. Uh, uh, it's yes. kind of, uh... This reminds me of the uh, porridge back, back my mom used to make. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever, when you were growing up, did, did your folks ever get like baker's chocolate? Oh, no. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just unsweetened. Uh, yeah, unsweet unsweetened chocolate. Okay, Tyler, uh, what's your roll? I uh, got a 10. Uh, you see blood on the side of one of the uh, panels of the wagon. Is it blood? Uh, you can have Christopher taste it if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it the uh, probably a bit of a scratch and sniff test to see if it smells like blood. <laughs> Medicine check, please. Um, blood and chocolate. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I rolled a one, and I've got a plus one to that, so that's a two. <laughs> so, that's a two. Uh, so, so you were just smelling it right not tasting it no i wasn't planning to taste it okay mm -hmm. you do not know what it is awesome. do you want to taste it or do you want to have christopher taste it <laughs> christopher will taste anything um, he'll eat anything i think, I think i'll uh hey guys looks like there's uh mm -hmm. something something else has splashed up. It doesn't look like that stuff. What do you think it is? Hmm. Well, I can like make the, uh, a medicine check if you want yeah. me to. Actually, John, Carrie, and David are still back by the longboat, so it's just oh, Ken, okay, we're still Tyler. back by the longboats. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'm going to go back to the village. Okay. Yeah, uh, I am. So as you guys are walking up, Tyler asks Ken and Christopher. Or he doesn't ask. He just says, hey, there's something on the side of this wagon, too. What do you guys Does think it look is? like the same as the other stuff? I, uh, or you said it looks no, like it looks blood. Different. Look, looks, looks different. Looks, looks reddish. Okay. Hmm, I would I'm like gonna, to take I'm a I'm going to smell it. 
Okay, give me. So uh, I'm sort of suspecting that some of the things we see here may not may be stuff like you know like strawberry syrup or chocolate or licorice. I'm not oh, going to yeah. taste it. No. Uh, so well, Ken, the island. Yeah. Ken, give me a uh, give me a survival <laughs> check as you sniff this one out. Nineteen, much better. Wine. <laughs> yeah, it's wine. Can I uh, well, dare I Ken to like wine to off it? the ground? Uh, Christopher, you, <laughs> Christopher dares Ken to lick it. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm sure the roughshod wood plank is probably fine to lick. <laughs> this is that extra fiber, man. I, I say It'll it's help obviously the grow. things. Things on this island are mm. include food substances where you'd normally expect fewer fu food substances. You would uh, think. So, <laughs> wait till you uh, find the cotton candy and die from the poison. Okay, I have all six of you up around the village. All of mm -hmm. you see the same thing. You see three clearly marked trails of barefoot individuals. Ergo, no booted individuals were here. Everybody who was around here had bare feet. Did uh, they? Are the bare feet covered with wine? Like, it, so you see wine in the fingerprints as if they were stomping grapes. Everybody, give me investigation check to answer that question. All right. Natural twenty, twenty-two. Ah, uh, let me see. That would be Let's a twenty-one. See. Yeah, 21 for Gobi, too. He breaks out his little monocle. <laughs> nice. Christopher? 16. Uh, all of you find footprints. None of you find your own because all of you rolled high enough. You're smarter than that. But no, there is no red substance in any of the other footprints. Okay. However, the higher rollers notice uh, weight distribution seems off, i.e. some of the footprints are deeper in the sand. Ergo, they were probably carrying either children or goods and services away. I s <laughs> Maybe we should follow the path of the people who are carrying the goods and services. Well, three locations. Whoop. Oh, oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll... <clears throat> the buildings are adobe with thatched uh, rooftops. Um, some of them have damage. Some of them just look old. And some of them, and, and they all smell like the black substance uh, that Ken smelled and Christopher tasted. No, not really. Uh, the jungle is resistant. So you have three trails clearly out. Uh, courtesy of Christopher, you have beached the longboat. It ain't going anywhere until all six of you push it away. Let's go left. Yes. I hear a okay. left. Anybody else? Left. Sure. Left is fine. With Always me. right with your left. Okay. Uh, you guys go into a grassland, tropical grassland. Think uh, Johnny Depp third fight, third movie fight with a spinning wheel. Uh, so you have high grasses that come up to your knees, uh, but not overly obtrusive. Uh, each of you will spot uh, some fauna. Uh, say maybe wild deer or something like that, that bristle at your approach and take off, bounding away. You can take a shot, but it will be at disadvantage. It doesn't appear to be anything unusual, no fey life or anything like that, just standard tropical crap. As you move into the grassland, however, the sand begins to dwindle away and you start to lose the trail. But the high grass is bent. Uh, I will take... Uh, I'll take survival checks from anybody who wants to examine the high grass. 14. Smooka does not want to examine grass. Natural grass 20 again. Uh, <laughs> 19. 23. Okay. You said investigation or survival, Frank? Survival. Survival? Uh, yeah, that's a four. <laughs> nice save. Uh, Ken, Tyler, uh, Christopher, what was yours? Or did you pass? I passed. Okay. Uh, Ken and Tyler, your rolls were high enough. Uh, you can see two distinct trails where the others cannot see it. Uh, whoever fled the village went in separate directions. One went north, one went south. Uh, you can tell that the southern route has bent grass in two directions, i.e. somebody came north 
and then they went south. The North Trail just bent north. I think we need to go this <laughs> this way, and I point to the South Trail. Gutsy move, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I got one vote south. South is fine with me. Uh, oh. I'll back the clerk. I'll say south also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys begin to move south. Everybody, D20. You want me to roll for you? Two. Fifteen. Eight. Eight. Thirteen. Uh, eight, eight, and two. Uh, I got a three. Oh, and a three. Uh, you are going to roll a constant. Or No, the two. Who had the two? Nobody had the two? I didn't have a two. Oh, the, the three is the two plus one, right? No, the three is just the three, straight three. What was it, plus? Uh, constitution. Oh, I had a ten then. Oh, that's five. Okay, the five and the eights. Uh, Chris, you moved up to ten, correct? Yes. So you're safe. You're playing the rogue? The spider. Okay. John, what's the con bonus on the rogue? Uh, uh, plus two. Okay. Uh... So everybody's fine. The mosquitoes are out. They're kind of pests, i.e. pests. Uh, but they're they're kind of thick. Everybody investigation check again, please. Oh, natural one. 17. Oh, uh, 21 for Gobi. 11. 16, 16. plus 5. 19, 17, and 21. Uh, there's a body in the weeds. <laughs> yeah, you can, uh, <coughs> you can move off the trail and might, it. might be dangerous. It is a male. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is a male face down. Uh, Carrie leaves the trail, I assume, to go over and investigate it. A lot, a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of flies on it already. Uh, give me a medicine check, please. Is anyone joining her off the trail? Um, well, I'm not. Well. Okay. I, I don't think I think I'm totally oblivious to all of this because I rolled a one. I would concur. Uh, Christopher the taste tester uh, moves over with Carrie. You two both find the dead body. Carrie, you do not know how this body died with that roll. Christopher, uh, she turns to you. Shrug shoulders. Do you want to take a look at the body and see if you know how it died? Yes. I'd like to I'll do a thing <coughs> with my sword. Sure. Uh, go ahead and give me a medicine check. Three. Uh, he cuts deep into the flesh. So now it's really difficult to tell how this thing died because <laughs> uh, he is now a butcher. <laughs> uh, it is a native body uh, adorned with some kind of stones and rock work, primitive jewelry around their ankle. Uh, male, decent shape, not overly strong. Uh a lot of flies. Uh, what Christopher does not know is he was stabbed in the side. Christopher's blade enhanced that wound, so you will never know how he died. So uh, there is nothing to loot other than the primitive jewelry, a necklace and an ankle bracelet. Fair enough. Uh, anything else you want to do with the body? Uh, it has a look of... <laughs> it. So it did not die peacefully in his sleep. Uh, Carrie and Christopher, you notice that uh, the other four brave souls have not left the trail, uh, and they are quite smug about it. Carrie, Christopher, initiative. <laughs> <laughs> 18 for me. Eight. Eight. Eight and 17. Uh, unbeknownst to you, Dwindling vines have started to wrap around your legs uh, for Carrie. Uh, six, they have not gotten a good grasp on you for Christopher. A three, uh, they have not gotten a grasp on you. Carrie and Christopher, you hear rustling in the bushes, and as you both turn around, you see the creeping tendrils coming towards you. Carrie, you are up first with the 17. You can run or stand and fight. Fair enough. Christopher, you are up next. I 
it'd be good to have the whole party to fight, so <laughs> I'm going to run back to the others. Ah, uh, Tyler, David, John, and Ken, uh, your two associates, run back quickly. No explanation given. Okay. What, you... what the hell? Guys? I say, well, yo, what, what happened? <laughs> there was a body. Things are grabbing me. I, the grass body, is alive. You mean it's undead? Could be undead. So, anything of interest? Oh, so, what what was moving then? Or monsters? Or you know, <clears throat> like big giant blades of grass trying to grasp our take our legs of from plant us. monsters. <laughs> Hmm. Does anyone have fire? We need to. You sure, it wasn't like an entanglement. Let's, let's, let's burn the island down. <laughs> uh, Tyler, other than the dead body, not much apparently. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's keep moving forward then. Forward it is. Uh, as you guys, vote. as you guys move forward, everybody, go ahead and give me just a wisdom check, not a save, just a check. Nine. 17. 7. Non-natural 20. Uh, 18. Tyler, David, Christopher, uh, in moving south, you start to realize that salt air is coming from both sides. That narrow strip of land, I think it's an isthmus, uh, is starting to narrow a little bit. Uh, because in between the loose foliage and dense foliage, uh, you can still make out water. So you are going around the small tip of the island, uh, covered currently by David. Uh, as you move <laughs> down there, everybody give me a perception check, please. 18. Six. Natural 20. 16. 10. 18, 20, and 16. Uh, uh, music up ahead? Some you kind of hear that? rhythmic light drumming? You know, maybe a Van Halen solo or something? <laughs> it's the sounds of battle drums does it sound like a he, first of all can can we hear it now that they pointed it out uh re-roll anything below a five no you're tone deaf uh i i got a six so i can't re-roll the six no six is fine you can barely hear it <laughs> yeah carrie you can't hear shit so does it sound like an ice cream truck <laughs> merry go round it sounds like a tambourine if they have tambourines and cacophony. As you push through the field of sea oats, you find yourself at the edge of a clearing. In front of you are bamboo huts with frond rooftops, and they collectively blend in with the surroundings, so they're kind of camouflaged. The structures appear to be in good shape, and the trees in the area are filled with fruit, but you don't see anyone. Uh, the huts are set up in a ring. Everybody perception check again. Ooh. Natural Natural is time. 19. Nat 20. Uh, 19. Uh, most of you, not Carrie, <laughs> smell, yeah, they're, they're pebbles, uh, sm smell something unusual. Christopher, did you have the Nat 20? Yes. You've been enough, been around enough questionable dens you realize that this would be a smell of narcotics oh boy guys <laughs> <laughs> the tambourine noise is getting a little bit louder as is the drums but instead of war drums eh, 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 it, it sounds more like bongos i'm rethinking that black substance man <laughs> black tar heroin <laughs> and chris exactly. tasted it <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all dead. Chris is just having this oh, oh, a hallucination that you guys are all going somewhere. Chris, you're currently naked eating bamboo or something. Everybody <laughs> else is dead. Cool. Uh, do you want to pierce the ring of huts, or what do you want to do? You you hear we, and you smell. Can we pick up where the um, sound of the drum seems to be coming from? 
Dead center. Yes. Right in the ring. Right in I'd the like ring. to go straight forward. <laughs> yeah. <Charging. laughs> yep. To the center. <laughs> Christopher's been enough. Dens, he knows what he wants. Does everybody follow him? Me <laughs> follow me to the drums, everybody. Left or right, skulkers. <laughs> I'll Tom? go to the left. Fair enough. Left. Uh, I'll follow Christopher. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Tyler, are you also following Christopher? Yes. Okay. Everybody moves forward. The skulkers move around the corner. As you move through the first ring of huts, you see a secondary ring of huts. Not as many, so it's opened up. It's like the spoke of a wheel. All of you witness a strange sight in front of you. There is a bonfire with naked men and women throwing some kind of herbage onto the bonfire, creating this wafting smoke. Everybody is naked. There are no children because we don't do that on Philbar. So there are no children. Uh, they are all very tan with bleached hair. Looks like something out of 10,000 BC. Everybody roll stealth. One. Fifteen. <laughs> wow. Eight. Oh. Uh, net one. I think that's Fourteen. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't it's trip one, one of you. One. He doesn't trip one of you. He trips himself over a vine. Uh, somebody else had a one as well? Yeah, I had a one. Okay. The, the uh, dwarf, kill me. <laughs> Yeah, you and Tyler trip over the same thing, land face down, causing these tanned individuals to spit around quickly. Uh, full frontal nudity, uh, shocking everybody, I guess. Uh, they are human, so no real shock there. Nothing in their hands, except for the guys and the ladies throwing the fronds onto the fire. One of them steps forward, and he goes after two, Carrie, and, and says, hey, what's up? <laughs> just, just chilling out, man. What are you up to? Why are your clothes on? <laughs> I'm her own. Nice to meet you. Why are your clothes on? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else present sees several members of this group coming towards you. Male, female, all naked, all with this weird smile on their face. What's up? What's <laughs> up? Uh, the leader apparently, is talking to Carrie. Anybody want to say anything to the big Lebowski dude? <laughs> yes, I want to tell him this is a, this seems very disorderly. <laughs> Where are your clothes? Somebody's lawful. <laughs> clothes? Clothes are square, man. You don't need clothes here. Why would you need clothes? You can let the sun bake in. Let it warm your spirit, man. We don't. <laughs> One to two small, three to four average, five to six large. That's four. He's average. <laughs> oh, God. Investigation check, everybody. All right. I'm not investigating penises. Yeah, we're not. Twenty-two. <laughs> Nine. Twelve. Ten. <clears throat> Nineteen. 15 and above, uh, you notice ceramic jars filled with reddish liquid. Everybody else still stuck on why everybody's naked and the weird sensation you're starting to get from the fire. <laughs> yeah, man, whatever you want, try this. This is wine that we just got. It is red wine. Uh, give me a constitution check. Uh, 
Aside from the creeping vines, do we see any vineyards or anything like that coming in? Uh, it sits on a promontory overlooking the ocean, but okay. it's kind of covered. It's okay, wine. Uh, so yeah, it, this this must sit on the edge of the land, but due to the foliage, it's hidden from casual view from the sea. Got it. <laughs> she's I, looking to hook up oh man you know you know what man it, it's not the motion of the ocean it's the something of the something i don't remember yeah her, 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 everything's cool here her last name is tinder uh <laughs> <laughs> odd even this is my friend barbarella <laughs> Those of you that are old enough to <laughs> know Barbarella, Barbarella yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, so Carrie's trying to hook up. What are the rest of you guys doing? I want to ask anyone if they know where we can score some candy. Yes. What's what's candy, man? Chocolate. I don't know what that is, dude. It's a. Uh... It's like this feeling, but it's in on the tongue, not in your brain. That'd be Barbarella. Oh. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get any useful information out of these people. Bar Barbarella taps on his shoulder and goes, Oh, 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 oh. You're talking about the, the, the stuff that the villagers make the stuff that tastes yes really good. yeah that oh yeah there's a village uh that way man it's got a cove or something it's right next to the water's edge yeah they make that stuff uh, they call it cacao cacao right uh <clears throat> yeah we're, we're trying to find what happened to it something's We've wrong there. The village was attacked uh, we haven't been there since yesterday, man. I don't know what I don't know what to tell you. They gave us that wine, man. But that cacao, that's poison. What do you mean it's poison? Oh, Maybe man. they're dogs. Isn't it poisonous to dogs? <clears throat> well, they aren't no looking, but yeah, we don't, <laughs> we don't do that. We believe it all natural. And uh, several of the individuals, male and female, come up and offer you bananas and grapes and uh, dragon fruit. We're well, all about all eat. health. <laughs> Constant. Because <clears throat> they got to process that, man. Processed foods are bad. <laughs> yeah. Processed, man. It's just wrong. That's not how God intended. <laughs> Jeepus is fine with cheese. Cheese is a highly processed food. <laughs> Jeebus believes in single plastic wrap cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently these it, it, hippies... It, it's um, called unknown country cheese. <coughs> they don't have American cheese, cheese yet. Yeah. That sounds unknown like a crock. <laughs> <laughs> crock o cheese. So uh, about all you can get from these stoners is <laughs> the village you just came from processes the chocolate slash cacao into something that they won't eat. Uh, they will, however, trade something for the wine. We make jewelry, man. Peace jewelry, friendship bracelets, and stuff like that. Ooh. <clears throat> yeah, man, you're our friend now. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So that... Um, oh, been here for years, man. We started out as a, a cult, but we didn't dig that scene, so we just abandoned God. Anybody who <laughs> worships God is just trash. <laughs> <laughs> they scan the crowd. Do they look at Ken? Five. They do not. They're hung up on Tyler. Hey, dude. Don't trip over my vines. His <laughs> <laughs> vines trip over us. Man, they're right there out in the open. 
So you guys going to strip down and join us in our festivities? or you just uh, I think we right should, uh, yeah, I think we should go back village. the way we came. Yeah. Nice to have met you. Uh, early morning, 10-ish. Hmm. Hey, man, what else do they you They got have? up early. Oh, yeah. Our okay. cable's down. <laughs> <laughs> no direct TV here. Serves mm -hmm. sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Don't. we call that guy and you notice there's a eunuch in the crowd <laughs> you know ken dolls that's uh, ken doll yeah. yeah nice so you guys just gonna bail on these hippies and not hang out with yes them? i don't think they, they, yeah, yeah. Seem to go past yeah i i don't think we're gonna get happen. any yeah. I don't think we're gonna getting anything useful out of these people. So yeah, let's go back the way we came. All right, fair enough. Later, dudes. If you ever want to come back, just leave the clothes at the door. But don't, don't bring any door. clerics. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and it looks at Ken and says, "Just don't bring back any clerics." You sound like a cleric, dude. Don't, <laughs> don't bring me down, man. And watch out for the well, cannibals. I mean, you, you've only you're only familiar with one god. You you obviously mm -hmm. don't know that there are more. <laughs> yeah, man. They eat people, <laughs> not the kind like Barbarella does, but like eat, eat people. <laughs> there. Uh, if you go go that away, points north, and you go that away points west right there if you go to the tower and you hang a left man cannibals everywhere those guys are those guys are downers man they're like clerics or something <laughs> <laughs> they might be the people they might know what happened to the <clears throat> to the villagers uh we we have weapons <laughs> That's true. These guys didn't have any weapons. So yeah, we, we, we could don't. kill one of them and then there'll be food we can give to the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they don't eat their, their own kind. Well, that's a waste. <laughs> these, are, these are Kentucky cannibals if it's good enough for family. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you guys can return the way you came past the dead body and the scary vines uh you will assume uh that mordecai valentine wanted the processed stuff <clears throat> he's the guy that hired the adventurers guild to go get this stuff so is mordecai that... is probably expecting processed chocolate uh okay okay well then so you guys return north, past the dead body, come to the spot where you can hang a right and go to the vacant village. Uh, there's also the secondary trail that goes north. <clears throat> why, why don't we try the secondary one? Yes. Okay. You All guys right, continue yeah. on through. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The good news is <clears throat> the grasslands fade away. Uh, you do see some giant snakes. Big snakes, freaking huge snakes, uh, but they do not appear to bother you. You pass by several banana trees. Uh, the insects don't seem as bad on this north end, and you enter a lightly or sparsely decorated area with palm trees. Everybody, perception check. Okay. 21. 15. 9. 16. Uh, 14. Okay. Everybody 16 and above notices a statue in the hills to the right. Everybody below 16 notices a tower in some mountains due north. <clears throat> I, I point out the tower and say, let's go there. That's the tower that guy was talking about. Maybe we should uh. check out this statue first. What statue? statue? The one just there. Now that everybody's pointed out their things, everybody now sees <clears throat> a statue. Eh, it looks a little pity. Uh, and a tower, a stone tower. Both well, we of them look are at... in mountains. We can look at the statue before we go to the tower. 
We should just take it with us. It, it's a tall statue. Uh, think Jesus down in Brazil. Oh. Yeah, it, it's not one of those, oh, look, there's a statue here. No, it's, hey, there's a big statue on the side of the mountain here. <clears throat> uh, think Easter Island. <coughs> So do we want to look at the statue or the tower or screw it, continue moving forward? Uh, statue first, then tower. Your movement through the jungle mountains has brought an unusual sound echoing off the cliffs. Caca! Caca! Uh, you move through a collection of trees and spy a cave where the source of the noise is located. It is roughly uh, 50 yards below the statue in the mountain. So the mountain is very green, very lush, but this opening is a good 25, 30 feet tall. Think bat cave or something. Uh, and then above that is a statue. Again, think Easter Island, a very crude ornamentation of a human head looking out over the Southlands. So you have the mountain, uh, the statue or the cave. Cave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go yeah. around in the cave. Sure. Yeah, nothing bad ever happens in a cave. Yeah. Uh, people like to live. <clears throat> oh, shit. <laughs> Every, everybody roll perception. That's 21. 20. 12. Uh, 18. <clears throat> 17 and above. very it's a very acrid smell uh you would equate it to a broken battery of something everybody below uh you're pretty sure that that smell is coming from one john <laughs> <laughs> nothing i just had some of the a banana one of the hippies gave me So do we <laughs> do we want to continue up to the cave? Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, who's first to the cave? I'll volunteer for this. Chris, <laughs> you notice that the cave is very voluminous, uh, very high, goes deep into the mountain, uh, and you notice that inside uh, the caca caca comes from. This weird statue, it's a stone statue, but the head is that of a giant woodpecker and the body is that of a human. Whenever you hear ka, 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 the head is tilting forward and back. Does hmm. anyone have torches or a lantern or anything? Everybody uh, will have basic equipment. <clears throat> I... I take my quarter staff and I cast the light spell on it. Okay. I'd like uh, to you... poke at it and see if it's actually alive or not. Sure. Uh, the light glistens off the eyes, appears to be gemstones of some kind, some green kind. As Chris takes out his pole and starts poking it, the caca stops, the head spins to the left, spins to the right, returns to face Chris. And starts to sing the tune of The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Wow. <laughs> oh, In the jungle, the mighty jungle. It's very melodic, although it's like there was a scratch in the wax of a vinyl record. So it's not great, but you can still tell what it is. At this moment, everybody roll perception. <clears throat> you got a three. Non-natural <laughs> 20. 17. 13. Uh, 16. Ken? Uh, what was this? Perception? Um, <coughs> I think I said I had a 9. No, I had a 12. Okay. Tyler, David, Christopher, are those leathery wings you're hearing in the background? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they sound like leathery wings. Like small Yo, leathery wings or big leathery wings? might be things wings. coming to attack us. Be funny ready. You should, funny you should ask that, David. A moment later, Christopher, 
Tyler, and David, you see an enormous creature coming from the bowels of the cavern flying at a high rate of speed right towards the statue. Uh, as it flies towards you, it appears to be a dragon. Uh, nice. Everybody roll initiative. Nice. Yeah, nothing bad ever happens in a cave. <laughs> Non-natural 20. 13. Oh. Wait, no, uh, sorry, 18. Not yeah, 18. I got a natural 20 plus 1. Yeah, I rolled great on initiative. Uh, that's a four plus five, nine. Nice. Uh, and I missed a couple here. John, what was yours? Thirteen. Uh, Ken, yours? Um, so what is this now? Initiative. Oh, um, six. <laughs> and carry initiative. <laughs> wow, you guys um, blow. What's her initiative... Oh. Uh, Ken will be back in a second. He had a low roll anyway. Uh, okay, we'll start with the 20. <laughs> okay, stop moving. I can't keep track of you. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Chris, I believe you got the 20. Uh, sorry, I, I messed up. It's actually an 18. That's still got, higher than what I got. I got a 20. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Tyler, you're up first. Uh, you were one of the ones that noticed the leathery wings. And you can see this primordial beast just blasting like it's been shot out of a cannon at you. Uh, you've heard of dragons. Don't think you've really seen one at this level because uh, you guys are third level. <laughs> so you're probably going to get your ass beat. But Tyler, uh, what do you want to do? How far away is it from me? It is accelerating at an enormous speed, traveling 90 feet per round, and it is 10 feet away. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it um, came up out of its bare lair and right-angled it, and it's on top of you. Yeah, what color is it? It appears to be dark. Uh, it's a dark cave, and the torch is flickering a lot. So, Tyler, um, you can kiss the ground or... Try and kill this thing. Yeah, I think I'm going to take a slash at it with the long sword. So I'm going to move up and hit it with that. Sure, go ahead. It's uh, flying right by you, so. That is a uh, 19 plus 5, 24. That hits. Um, so that is two-handed, because I'm not holding anything else at the moment, is a nine damage. Very nice. A loud shriek is heard, uh, clearly angering, and Tyler is now covered in a black icor known as Blood. Christopher, with your 18, what would you like to do? I would also like to fight. Okay. I will swing with my sword, my long sword. Sure. Uh, just to make everybody aware, house rules are ones do not miss, ones hit your friends. <laughs> Go ahead, Christopher. Welcome All to right. Murder Hobo, guys. Gotta, let's see. 18. Do I, what do I add to that? Do I have to add anything to that, or is it just 18? Uh, you can add your strength bonus, but 17 is what you need, so you have also struck the creature. All right. <coughs> and damage, then. Let's see. Hmm. 1d3, d8. So, two plus uh, three slashing damage, and five, and also have the dueling thing, so it's a mm -hmm. uh, seven damage. Nicely done. Uh, and can I go ahead with my action surge to attack again? Sure. I'll let you hit the tail. All right. Cool. Oh, uh, four. I miss. Sure to hit uh yes you do miss you almost hit five john in the face with your second attack uh the creature as i said is moving 90 feet per round and it is shot out of a cannon it is next uh and unfortunately only the 13 i think that was john did you have yes. a 13 for initiative uh 
can take a slash at it, but at disadvantage because it's moving so fast. And you nearly got your nose clipped off by Chris. I got a 13 since it's a disadvantage, but I have a plus five to hit. So <clears throat> does that hit? Yes, 18 will hit and the Sacred Flame can go. Okay, I do a total of four points of damage. Are you even playing? <laughs> Sacred Flame, uh, do I make dodge? Make a DC 13 dexterity save. I do not make that. That is a seven plus one point. Two. Oh, you and John can hang out. <laughs> this thing screeches, douses most of you in blood because Chris and Tyler have already opened it up, pissing it off. It goes out the cave and straight up screeching in pain as it does so does you this guys blood are... seem like actual blood <clears throat> oh yes it's warm and smells foul uh okay. you guys are underneath the protective canopy of the cave at this time but said dragon is outside you are inside in a narrow area <laughs> oh boy so uh the the two sixes uh, actually, let's see. David actually, Carrie, I had a four, not a six. Okay. David and Carrie, you have not gone. Did you want to do anything? No, uh, I, I, I did the sacred flame. Right. Uh, Carrie and David. Uh, uh, <laughs> you have a Carrie and a, a Kelly. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Uh, I am going to cast Mage Armor. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Everybody is inside the cave. Uh, the screeches are a little bit fainter right now, <clears throat> so it's still outside. Uh, everybody give me a survival check to see if you can triangulate the position of all these mountains and echoing. Natural one. John, you're, it's probably still inside the cave somewhere. Uh, 18. 20. Three. 20, not natural. <clears throat> Carrie, what was yours? Tyler, David, uh, it's a little bit difficult to hear because of the uh, landscape out there, but you think it's somewhere above you, outside. Your suspicions are confirmed as debris, dirt, and sand start to fall from the ceiling as though something possibly heavy or large has perched itself on the side of the mountain. What would everybody like to do? <clears throat> um, I'm ready to charge. Sure. Yes, run outside. <laughs> I want to get out of this cave. Yeah, the <laughs> dragon can breathe in, breathe on us. Yeah, that's this. true. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is Woody doing at this point? Woody has stopped singing altogether. Okay. <laughs> Is it like looking inquisitively or anything, or is it just? Nope. It's like a robot at rest. Oh, okay, got it. <clears throat> sure. <laughs> well, I have what? Christopher, Tyler, John, and Ken going out. David and Carrie in or out. Hmm. Um, I am going out. Okay. David? Split the party, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I am gonna try to convince <laughs> Carrie that maybe our best course of action is out. I don't know because if this thing comes <clears throat> back in, you know, mouth a blazing. I right. got... you've done twenty one hit points of damage. More than More that. More than that. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so everybody re-roll your initiative for me, please. 17. 9. 16. 19. 19. Plus 1. Sorry, 20. Yep. David? Uh, 19. Uh, John? 9. So Tyler and I die first. <laughs> so, Ken, you were yes. a 17? Yes. And Christopher? 16. 
Well, you guys are all pretty much in there, except for John. John's going to be roasted. Uh, you guys run outside. Everybody give me perception checks, or no, investigation checks to see if you can spot this thing. 19. 5. 10. Holy crap. Nat 20 plus 5, 25. <clears throat> 15 and above, you crane your neck, you look up. Uh, remember that Easter Island statue thingy? Mm -hmm. The dragon's behind it, and it just <laughs> blows acid breath at the base. You see the Easter Island statue. Melt. Nope, just the base melts. The rest of it is coming down as a projectile. Everybody, DC 15, or get hit by the stone toboggan. Oh, is this a dexterity save or dexterity yep. roll? Save. save. I failed. Okay. Um, magic number. 15 is the magic failed. number. 14, 16. I failed. <clears throat> what, what was the difficulty again? 15. Uh, who failed? Uh, I got me, a 17. Um, the, the Dwarven Cleric. Okay, so Ken, Tyler, and David failed. You'll take full damage. Christopher, Carrie, John, half damage. Okay. Uh, half damage. That's, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> Max damage is nine points. Holy crap. Okay. Half damage is four. Round down. Always round down. <laughs> so half damage, four. Max damage, nine. Uh, I guess we, it's a baby dragon then. It is a baby dragon. Uh, the 19s. Uh, as the stone sled knocks over some of you, maybe crushing a few toes. Uh the dragon is still perched up on the top of the mountain, uh, so you are going to have to climb over difficult terrain. So, missile or magic is your best choice. Uh, melee weapons, you're going to have to charge and won't attack till next round. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a big cave. <laughs> <clears throat> um, how far away is it? 35 feet. 35 feet. Okay. Um, so 19s, you guys are up. Yeah, yep. I've got a javelin, so I'm going to throw that. Um, sure. And that's disadvantage, so oh, hang on. <clears throat> 35 feet is disadvantage? Um, it's disadvantage long range, because <clears throat> it's only a range of 30 feet. Oh, okay. You know what? Let's change it. He's 30 feet away. I don't want you to throw at disadvantage. Okay. Um, that's a four. <laughs> right <laughs> into the side of the mountain. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Dumpy's gonna fire a ray of frost towards the dragon. Uh, yeah, with a nine to hit. <laughs> All of the vegetation right below the ledge that the dragon is on is frozen. Uh, seventeen. Who's 17? I think that was me. Okay. So that was 16. Uh, 16? Almost got him. Uh, 16. Oh, I... Go ahead. Oh, I... <clears throat> whatever. Yeah, 17 is what? 17 is your magic this. number here. Who got the 16 on initiative? Um, I, 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 I think I got either 16 or 17. You know what? I, I I missed you. You did have the seventeen. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, that, that's um, sorry. So oh, then no. I will cast another. Is it within range of Sacred Flame? Mm -hmm. Thirty feet. Actually, instead of instead of Sacred Flame, if it's thirty feet away, I'm going to say <clears throat> I'm command. I'm sleep. Fair enough. What's the DC? Um, thirteen. Uh, sorry, that's a 17 on the roll. <laughs> okay. It does not understand your crude and foul language. Uh, Ken is gone, Christopher's gone, Carrie, 15. 
Fair enough. Uh, bad news, John. It got an 11, so it goes before you. It is going to opt for Acid Breath. My first roll is going to be who it is aiming at directly. The second roll is who's standing next to him. So, three. Tyler is its main target. Standing next to Tyler is John. I'll take dexterity check, or I'm sorry, constitution checks from both of you. Should be easy. It's 11, but that's only going to be half damage. No, I got a five. So. <laughs> I got wow. a 16. Uh, Tyler grabs John and holds him in front of him, using him <laughs> as a human shield. <laughs> uh, you're safe. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Wow. That is a lot of ones. That is an unfair amount of ones. Okay, John, you take 12 hit points of acid damage. Tyler, you take six. The rest oh. of you shit your pants, and it's John's turn. Uh, okay, I'm down to seven hit points here, so I may need to get a cleric if, when this fight's done. I think you should charge. I, I... <laughs> no. Uh, can I can I go ahead and use my cunning action to hide to make a sneak attack at this point? It's out of range. I mean, you aren't you aren't even close to melee range. Oh, oh, sneak attack has to be melee. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, I'll just shoot my short bow then. Sure, go ahead. I wonder 12. if you survive the acid. Nope. Uh, you go over your arrow, probably hit one of those hippies. <laughs> oh, okay. One of those non-believing, relig non-religious types. Uh, oh, top okay. of the order, boys and girls. I'll it's take not the that they're non-religious. It's that they, <clears throat> not only do they only recognize one God, they don't even recognize the one God. That's right. They're agnostics. Uh, my two 19s, you guys are up. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Um, uh, am I able to retrieve my javelin from the side of the mountain? Or it's stuck in last oh, time. With that throw? Oh, hell yeah, it's right there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to grab it and try throwing it again. Sure. Maybe throw um, it like a man this time. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> this is a, uh, a three. You know what? Just to keep it interesting, John, a javelin appears right between your legs from the guy behind you. That just Would you stop that? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to uh, get me killed. Who's my other 19? Was it Ken? I had uh, a 17. No, that, uh, uh, me. 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 Uh, 21 to hit with a ray of frost. Uh, that time you get it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, four points of frost damage. Uh, you're whittling it away. Uh, 17 is up next. Yeah, I'll try again with another command spell because I've got more than one spell, and I'll say sleep. Not 20, boys and girls, my first of the night. <laughs> <laughs> again, I get, oh, I, it's speaking French, you're speaking German, there's just something not going on there. Uh, 16, I believe, Chris. Yes. Yeah, just because dwarves like like to drink a lot of ale does not make us German. Stop slurring, <laughs> stop slurring your spell speech. I'd like to uh, throw my own javelin at him. Sure. I'd throw John at him if I were you at this point. I mean, he's almost yeah, no, that's dead. a pretty good idea. Yeah. I'm gonna. I like to throw John. <laughs> John's pretty stout, so you probably aren't going to get much of a lift on him. You may throw him like Tyler, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll just go with the javelin in this case. Fair so. choice. Go ahead. 14. Plus anything dexterity since you're throwing? Uh, I, let's see. There's like the <laughs> I have to hit thing on like the like weapons description thing. Do I add that? Yep. Okay, that sounds so, like a uh, hit. 19, yeah. In that case, let's see. 1d6. You do this well enough, I get to kill everybody. Uh, one. Oh, no. One plus three, so four. <laughs> wow. We're uh, rolling crap damage. You, you guys stink. Uh, Carrie, last time you sat out, this time eh, the creature's starting to bleed a lot. 30 feet. 
And John is probably going to die. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Not in Lucia and Melee. Uh -uh. You should have a short bow, though. You actually can get get sneak attack under certain circumstances at range. Yeah, but she'll shoot John in the head. <laughs> 19 hits. This could be very hilarious right now. <laughs> Ooh, so close. Now John's going to die. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, severely wounded. This creature takes one step, two steps, launches itself off, opens its toothy maw, and heads directly for... Not me. Please not me. Six. The cleric. <laughs> Oh, uh -uh. well, if he uh -uh. dies, there's no one here to heal me. Every, everybody sees that it's like Air Force One with Harrison Ford. It's going down, and it is not doing well. Uh, the teeth will cause a substantial amount of damage. Uh, however, Ken ducks at just the right moment in time, uh, unless a six hits you. No. Okay, uh, the creature, I mean, it, it looks like it's going down. It starts to pass over your group. Uh, John, chance to be a hero or cool. roll a one and die. <laughs> okay, um, is it within melee range now? It is flying over top of you. Can I use a cunning action to hide and then do a sneak attack? John jumps behind Tyler. <laughs> and waits for his opportunity to stab. All right. <clears throat> now, sneak attack just does extra damage, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. All right. Please, please. Okay, that's a 10 plus 5 is a 15. Swing and a miss. <laughs> ah! uh, as the creature uh, is, is not getting much lift at all. The 19s. Can you put this thing out of its misery oh, as it soars by? Uh, 15 <laughs> plus 5, 20 to hit. That's a hit. Tyler, how about you? Um, so it's close enough now to be in melee, yeah? Mm hmm I'm gonna have a go with the longsword. Okay. Right, so that is 18. Both of you hit. How much damage do you do, David and Tyler? Uh, 7 points frost damage. Nice. That is... <clears throat> Seven damage. Fresh from lunging at Ken and missing, uh, the creature flies over you at a very slow rate of speed and is on a very bad descent angle. David hits it with a ray of frost right in the skull. The black scales turn white. Tyler lops through its belly, covering the rest of you with more blood. The beast goes down, hits the side of the mountain, its frozen head explodes, Ooh. and the body, boom, 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 down to the trail that you guys climbed up here. Clearly, this creature is dead. Good. Excellent. Could the cleric yes. please he Yes, could the cleric... <laughs> Does the, the my jab does, the blood, does the black blood of this creature resemble the black <clears throat> blood that we saw in the town. No, because Christopher can tell you that uh, while the stuff was rather smooth, this stuff is kind of just glommy. Hmm. Uh, well, could the cleric please heal me now? I'm at seven hit points. Okay. Uh, Counterspell. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so that's um, 1d8 plus a con, I believe. So that's one point plus your con. Okay, that's three points. So I'm at 10 now. Yeah. Behind you, everybody hears another tune coming out of the cave. This one will resemble We Are the Champions, as, as the woodpecker is very animated in chirping this one away. Uh, well, I think I think we need to get out of this cave because the... Oh, you uh, guys are out. Yeah, you guys okay, are on okay. the, the side. Let's get away from this cave just in case Carrie's right and the mama dragon is in there. Yeah, it can't be good news that that thing's singing again. No, let's let's head to the tower or something. Let's get out of here. I got two leaving. What say the other four? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's a good yeah. plan. <laughs> Nobody so. wants to investigate the cave. Fair enough. You guys. Well, we, there, what if, you know, that's we discover <laughs> that this is is related. I mean, now that the dragon is dead, the cave's probably pretty safe. That's true. Unless there's it, a mom. pretty small. And dragons do have hordes, so usually. Okay, I mean, all right. Okay, this, I don't think this cave is going to fit a much bigger dragon. Okay, we 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 can investigate the cave if the rest. That's what you the rest of you guys want to do. You know, you've convinced me. Let's go into the cave. <laughs> <laughs> I am not doing it for greed. I'm thinking maybe like maybe the, the chocolate's in the there. Town. Attack the town. <laughs> nice. It's worth, uh, it's how gold. would I know? Uh, <laughs> the I don't have dragon lore. The dragon's name was Chocola. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys head in. You pass the woodpecker. It's still doing the head bob of We Are the Champions. Uh, beyond is a very steep slope, clearly where this creature <laughs> shot out of. Uh, clearly it was used to the angles because it didn't bother to stop. Uh, so ahead of you at the back of the cave is a very steep slope, very fine, almost like it was a volcanic tunnel at one point in time. Uh, everybody give me op or investigation checks. <clears throat> 19. 13. 19 plus 5, 24. <clears throat> 15 and above notices bits of obsidian glass peppering inside this tunnel, indicating to those who rolled high enough that if we slip, we're going we to die. cut the shit out of ourselves. So who wants to push John in first? <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. <laughs> Does anybody want to brave the descent? Uh, there are more than enough rock structures around here. You have rope. As long as you don't hit any obsidian on the way down, the rope should be fine. I'll go first. You going to go solo or use a rope? I think I can go solo. I'm strong enough. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Famous I may not be the first one to die. <laughs> I uh, I will say categorically that if you fail this, I'm only going to slice off one piece of your body. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I'll, I'll give you dexterity save or acrobatics save. Let's see, dexterity or acrobatics. Should be fairly close. <clears throat> I think I'll keep the fingernail. So I got a 13. Yeah, I'll do uh, acrobatics. They're both the, I get the same thing for both. Your hands have small cuts in it as your descent was successful. You only went down 25 feet, but <laughs> it was pretty sharp. Uh, do you have dark vision? Yes. Okay. You can make out shapes. This is a 1980s security camera. Uh, it stinks real bad and when you land you land on what appears to be bones uh in the light you cannot tell whether they are human or animal the smell uh, is a mix of uh, corpse and dung hmm. it smells pretty rank down here guys <laughs> and uh there's some bones here 
I'd go <laughs> down. Dem dinner bones, bones. <laughs> so it, it looks like maybe it, it, it real the dragon's lair actually didn't have anything to do with the attack on the village then unless that's where all the people went missing to fair uh i'd go down there but i don't have dark vision <laughs> so i won't be able to see much can i you can throw a torch at him skull while I'm down I, there? I can cast light so yeah I yes, can just okay. light on a rock and throw the rock down there. <laughs> Roll a d20 straight up. <laughs> what, who, me? If you're putting it on the rock and throwing it down no, there, I'm I want to see it, it on a rock. I'm just going to uh, illuminate. 17. Okay. Chris, right. uh, a rock falls down, casting illumination, and uh, you have your pick of skulls. There's a ram skull, a goat skull, uh, a couple of human skulls in there. Uh, and something that you aren't really sure what it was because it's all cracked and deformed. Uh, you also notice uh, something near the back of the cave uh, over the field of dung and past the rib bones of something. I'd like to go investigate the something. Yeah, fairly fresh. Uh, give me a dexterity to miss the dragon pies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, five. Yeah, you stepped right in it all the way up to your hip. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> you're going to stink. However, uh, in the light of the rock, there's a large skull, possibly a crocodile, but something shiny is inside this skull. I'd like to uh, reach, reach over and take it. Uh, you lift up the crocodile skull, and it, it is a stainless steel egg uh the size of a kid's head i've got it i've got the egg i've got an egg y'all <laughs> you hear because he is down and under I, I i'm gonna go down and join him but i've got a plus five acrobatics but i'm gonna use a rope uh you may roll at advantage cool Here come the uh, double ones. Okay, that's an 11 plus 5 is a 16. You make your way down into the pile. Go ahead, Christopher. Are there any other things <clears throat> of interest that I can see, or like the chocolate? There is no chocolate. Ah. There is no gold. All right. Nope, only this uh, stainless steel egg. I'll uh, return to the rest of the par party and uh, prepare to climb up. Okay. Uh, you meet John as he finally lands. I am here to help. <laughs> hey, uh, I've explored the rest of the cave and from that, uh, ah. the light of the rock, there's a, I'm pretty sure this is where all the villagers ended up. We got human okay. skulls, we got ram skulls, we got unknown skulls, and uh, okay. don't tell the others, but I stepped in some uh, pie. Yeah, I, I think we'll all be able to smell that. It is rather pungent. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and go back up. If you want to Grab a skull or two, you may. You may. I'll go ahead and uh, take the rope back up. Uh, okay. You're not taking that rope up until I get back up there. <laughs> See, had you not said that, that is how I was going to interpret it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, both of you make your climb at advantage. <clears throat> Nat 20. 16. Both of you managed First. to scale past the obsidian, not cutting the rope and making it up safely. Uh, Carrie, Tyler, David, Ken. Yeah. Hmm. What in the hell is that smell? Every animal within three miles is going to smell him. Right. <laughs> what did you? What did you find down there? Jesus. I found the, uh, well, it's probably the remains of the villagers. There was, like, human skulls, uh, ram skulls, unknown skulls, some, uh, stuff, and I found this one crocodile uh, skull that when I opened it up, inside was this stainless steel egg. And I show it to them. <clears throat> I take a step closer to have a better look at it, and then whatever that smell is gets real worse, so I'm going to step back again. Okay. Give me a quick investigation check. Uh, yeah, that's that's a two. 
You don't see shit on that egg because the smell of shit coming off Christopher's leg is pungent. Yep. Uh, so he's carrying it like he's a Heisman Trophy winner. <laughs> uh, everybody is back up in the cave. Some of you have torches. Christopher still has the rock with a light on it, so he's Statue of Liberty holding the egg. So he's, I don't know, uh, Statue of Liberty Heisman or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, smells nope. like shit. I'm going to no. hold hold my breath and pull out my monocle and investigate the egg. Investigation check. Also, okay. you notice the bird has stopped singing again. Uh, 19 plus 5, 24. There are small crisscrossing lines that you aren't sure what it means. Okay. But they are very faintly edged into this egg. Okay. All right. Uh, does it look like there might be any machinations, like the like parts of the egg would like turn or anything like that? Give me a strength check. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would be an eleven. Yeah, you don't think so. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, what do you want to do now? Let's uh, all get out of this cave and. Uh go for the tower and well i'm gonna try and do it myself i'm pretty strong strength check do you do you wipe your hand on the shit leg first to get a better grip yes <laughs> at disadvantage okay <laughs> if only the wizard had pressed the digitation <laughs> so i uh, roll twice twice and take the lower of the two is that right correct yep okay uh i 12 Nah, you do better than David did, but it ain't opening. It's not turning. It's not twisting. Uh, so I heard going out of the cave and headed yes. towards the tower. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody perception check. Okay. Probably not. 15. That's 10. Uh, 17. 11. Thirteen and above. Smoke. Twelve and below. Chris's leg. <laughs> <laughs> now, does the smoke smell like the herbs from the, the other uh, town that we we saw? It the like burning lumber. Okay. Where where's the water, man? I I'll, I'll be able to walk it off. <clears throat> if the if if the sun dries it, then he can just dust it off. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's smoke coming from in between the tower and the cave. Should we uh, check out the see what's burning, or should we steer clear of the fire? Well, I say we find out what's burning. Yes, let's go. We should Lead go the way, danger. John. <laughs> <laughs> Fall off the mountain. Uh, as, as you guys are moving through the treacherous mountain area, I will take a dexterity saving throw. 14 is your magic number. Ooh! Ooh. Nothing nope. near it. Four. Nine. Sixteen. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Dexterity? Okay, that would be thirteen. <laughs> Failed. Take six hit points of damage. Holy crap. <laughs> Everybody who passed, take none. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I'm, uh, uh, miss- I'm really not looking well, Stan. Yeah, right. neither neither yeah, is the wizard. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got, fo- I've got four hit points left. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I the, was the, shield, then, and the wizard <laughs> has five. <laughs> uh, okay, the first with the four hit points, um, take two plus your con bonus back. Okay, that's four, so I'm back to eight now. Yeah. I, I'm only at twelve, so I, I don't. I, that's my last first level spell. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, the good news is, uh, in spite of the falling, you are now in a slight valley, and it appears as though a plume of smoke is not too far away 
maybe three miles, one hex right. over. And you guys are right above Ken's head, uh, not in the darker green, but the lighter green. So you're in the valley. Mm. Yep. Who wants to D12 against me to see if you guys are going to be the victim of a random monster? Uh, I'll do it. Okay, Tyler. This is my D12. That one. Ooh, sorry guys, I got a one. <laughs> ah! <laughs> wow. We are everybody, not lucky today. Everybody initiative. Oh, yeah. Great. Oh, wow. That's Nat bad. 20, w. 23. Four. <laughs> and I, I wasn't that bad. <laughs> 14. Uh, 17. Ken? Uh, that's 12. Okay, good news for some of you. Nat 20, John, I believe. Yes. Uh the vines are alive here and starting to encroach upon you. You may run towards a clearing or stand brave and true with your soon-to-be-dead friends. I will stay with my soon-to-be-dead friends and hack at it with my rapier. Dumbass. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Does a 10 hit? Not a 10, a 12. A 12 hits. Okay. <laughs> That is 11 points of damage. Ooh, that's not bad, actually. Are you attacking to the left or attacking to the right? Oh, there's, not, there's nothing directly in front of me? No, clearing. Oh, cl clear oh. air where you could have ran, but nope, you're going to die. <laughs> okay, I'll attack to the right. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I have a 19. Carry. Run or fight. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, 17, Tyler? Um, I am going to fight. What have we got? These vines that we've... Yep. All right. They're going to take a hit from the longsword, hopefully. Oh, right. yep. Net 20 plus 5. <clears throat> Damage. Damage. Modifier. So right. you, you only get the modifier once, but you get to roll damage twice. Uh, are you attacking right or left? Um, John left. attacked right. Okay. I'm going to go to the left. So we've got... Damage, damage, and modifier. <clears throat> 10, 15, uh, 20 damage. Ooh, wow. Nice. Uh, the tendrils on the left immediately recede from Tyler's vicious, uh, viciously aggressive attack. Uh, 14. David. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to fire a ray of frost. That would be a 19 to hit. Left or right? Uh, where did Tyler strike? I was on the left. Tyler uh, struck I'm on the left, left. John struck on the right. Okay. Okay, and that is uh, six points of frost damage. Withers and dies. Twelve, Ken. Okay, sacred flame. Okay. Uh, uh, DC 13 save. 15 on the roll, uh, zero added, so safe. Yeah, he saved. Uh, and I skipped over carry. You want to attack? Oh, no, you ran. No, <laughs> you ran. She was pretty uh, Sir Robin. <laughs> <laughs> On the right, uh, Christopher, roll me odd even. If it's odd, you're on the right side. If it's even, you're on the left, and that is important. 15, odd. Uh, you are on the right. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> the vines immediately lash out at you. Oh, no. 13 plus 1, 14. Okay, AC is 18. Uh, bounces off whatever armor you have. Chainmail. Your turn, run or fight. <clears throat> Me fight. 
Fair enough. I rolled a 12 plus a 5, so 17. That is. All right. Swing in, with, swing in that sword. Three plus another three, six with the <clears throat> dueling. Total eight. <clears throat> uh, the tendrils on the right begin to recede. New round, nat 20. I'm going to continue to attack the tendrils on the right. <clears throat> Fair enough. And that's another 12. That hits. This <clears throat> time I only do five points of damage. 19. Carry, you have successfully reached the clearing. The smoke is over to your right. Perception check. Uh, you see what appears to be an intentional fire, an organized fire, and several individuals, shirtless, moving about a grove of plants in this area. So the same ones? Can't tell from this range. 17. The tendrils are still moving, Tyler, on the right but they are retreating. I'm going to go and give them another, uh, some more motivation to keep moving away. Sure. Uh, that is, that's only a 10. Uh, not much motivation there to move. <laughs> uh, 12 is next, Ken. Okay. Um, what? Did you, did you run last time? I can't remember. I didn't run. Okay. I just used Sacred Flame. That's right. So. And I've been dodging that shit all night long. <laughs> yes, <yeah>, so. <laughs> Stupid worthless Claire. Are we still being attacked? <laughs> uh, the the tendrils are retreating on the right, on the left. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to move away from them then. Okay. They're, they're getting in our way when for our actual mission. Sure. You move and forward. If, how, actually, never mind. I'll move away from them, but I'll stay within 30 feet and I'll zap them with Sacred Flame anyway. So I might as well. I'll get that one later. Oh, not this time. You got me. That's a six. Okay, six points. And that will cause them to die. Sweet. Good. You feel good about that, holy man, killing stuff? <laughs> I, I've, with, with I've, the, I've studied how to surface people pick their vegetables. So you've attacked a squash farm. Uh, oh, no, the, I, I've just um, been harvesting the vegetables. <laughs> In fact, I've, I've cooked them even before um, picking them. Oh, very nice. Uh, you can pick them out at John, or no, John didn't get attacked this round. Uh, as the battle subsides, each of you turn towards the clearing, and you notice the carry is standing there, kind of looking at something. I try to see what they're staring at. <laughs> I'll raise up my turn. hand and say, can we take yeah, a, 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 a short rest, <laughs> like an hour, to get a hit die back? <laughs> Tyler? Oh, actually, that's not a bad idea. Having a John a little patch up. Oh, I'm I'm definitely for getting as many hit points back as we can. Christopher, these guys are taking a short rest. Carrie, what do you want to do? Okay. Yeah, I think I if everybody if people are taking a short rest, I'd do it too. Everybody takes a short rest until six ten. Ah. There's, some, there's something moving in the undergrowth. I, uh, I, it's about I, three see feet that? tall. And you can see that thing. What, what's Every, that there? Everybody, perception except for Ken, because he saw it. Okay, 11. 
three. Wow. <laughs> David? Uh, 19. The 11. John or Tyler? Did, yeah, I, I, oh, I had the 11. John and David, you also notice <clears throat> this three-foot creature. It appears to be dark-headed, shirtless, humanoid in nature, carrying a wicker basket. It does not seem to notice you three at all. Then so I, I let him go th- on his merry way. By three <laughs> foot, you mean three foot tall, not has three legs. Correct. Yep. Ah, oh, okay. So like, yeah. a, like a dwarf or a half leg? <laughs> Possibly. But actually, probably still shorter than dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> so you three see it. The other three do not. I let it go on its merry way. Okay. <laughs> others uh yeah i'll just uh direct those who didn't see it their attention and follow john's suit by letting it go (laughs) ken it falls on your shoulders the other two are content with uh binding their wounds uh what do you want to do with this potential friend or foe well we really need to take a short rest so we can use hit dice and gain some hit points back because I don't have enough spells to heal everybody. An hour passes. Everybody roll a hit die to get back. Yeah. <coughs> now, how does this work? Do we just roll our hit dice? You you or... have a, a number of, of hit dice equivalent to your hit dice. You get back half of them per day, and you roll your you roll your hit die plus your con um, bonus. Yeah, plus your okay, con so... bonus when you take a short rest. I have uh, my hit dice are three d eight, so I roll three d eight. Then you roll d d eight plus con. Just one. Got it. You can use. It. You can get. You can use as many as you have, which would be three. That's okay. I I rolled an eight, so I'm up at eighteen. So I'm good. Yeah. So I'm down by. Let's see. I was. I'm at nine hit points. So it's. <clears throat> One, so everybody's 12, got their hit dice. Yeah, twelve. That's <clears throat> in this 21. valley. Twenty-one. Okay. That's in this valley, you notice that after an hour, 24. the fire is extinguished. The three-foot creature is gone. It was over there. You're in the middle of this glade. Uh, in the hot summer sun, Christopher's leg is really ripe now. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I forgot about the poop, didn't ya? <laughs> Wizard gotta have prestidigitation to get that off. Uh, think? no, I do not. I you went don't. off. And, okay, I didn't have a the, choice on that. I went by the no, character sheet. The pre-gens didn't have prestidigitation. That is so weird. Uh, okay, <laughs> so in this glade, you can move north or south to investigate what this gnome halfling kobold goblin thing might have been where the fire was does the north road take us towards the tower no the tower will be to the west so you will have to climb up the mountain again and get to the tower Maybe we uh, go see what the little guy was up to. Okay. Yeah. You guys travel about 300 yards, uh, three times the length of a football field. Uh, You find crushed grass in this glade, uh, and you find two ruts, like a wagon went through here. Uh, The fire wasn't huge. It wasn't a bonfire, and it appears to have dirt thrown on it as though it was intentionally put out. Uh, everybody roll a straight up D20. I want to know who rolls the highest. Six. Uh, what Probably is the vegetation the like? Yeah, 15. I got a six, two. Okay. That is not a D20. Yeah, I got a 12. Uh, 15. 15's my highest. Christopher, you find a wicker basket with some kind of... Uh, it's it's kind of a weird 
fruit or vegetable in it. Uh, the vegetation, David, is grass, uh, but only up to your knee, and you are surrounded by trees bearing these weird pods. Okay. And Christopher has found a wicker basket with some of these pods in them. Hmm. <clears throat> May I, I mean, give a taste? Cocoa, cocoa pods, cacao pods. Christopher wants to taste it? I, yes. Give me a con check. <laughs> 17. This tastes just like that crap splattered on the walls in the village. So it could ah. be cacao pods. Interesting. Or it could be cattle pods. He just knows it tastes the same. Wow. <laughs> uh, the ruts go south. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, guys, there's uh, some... some uh, <clears throat> a wagon went to the south from here. I think we should uh, go and check out where it might be. It might have the chocolates. Or that, okay. or, or that little thing. Little okay, guy. sure. Let's go. Sure. For the first hour, you continue to pass by these trees bearing these strange pods. Colorful birds are stuck in the tree, and they give off weird chirps. They're smaller, colorful, with a long beak. They're toucans, essentially. Uh, they're non-aggressive, and they just casually watch you from the top of these trees. The next hour... The tracks seem to be a lo whole lot more fresh. However, there's something rustling in the trees above. Hmm. One, Carrie, and she'll hate me forever. Uh, you hear a... <laughs> oh, and at 18, some kind of object gets flung from the trees and hits you. One to two head, three to four body, five to six leg. Three, right in the middle of the chest, you get flung by monkey poo and smell <laughs> like Christopher. <laughs> the trees light up with ka -ka -ka, ka -ka, ka -ka, ka -ka, ka ka and poo rains down on all of you. Oh. You have your choice to run or Stand and fight. These things oh, are run. Crazy. Yep. Oh, run. It, it's written right there, black and white. Who wants oh. to run? Um the the dwarven cleric. Okay, the cleric. We, we, and... we don't have these things in dwarven caves. <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> Carrie and Ken are running. What are the rest of you doing? Yeah, I, I say we run the gauntlet. <laughs> I'll use myself how you guys to can live under trees all the time. <laughs> I'll uh, use myself to try and I'll uh, try to shield others because I can't really smell much worse. <laughs> that's, that's I have true. a shield, so I'm going to hold that over my head like an umbrella. Okay, that's fair. John, are you running as well? Let me see. Do I have a shield? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I guess <laughs> I could I could try that. No, I have a nine strength. I won't be able to lift him. Uh, I, I, I better hightail it, too. Everybody who's running, which is all of you, I get one free swing at you again. Carrie. Not this time. That's a seven. Christopher. That is a four. John. An 11. So what do I need to roll? My armor class is 14. Okay, miss. Tyler. 17. <laughs> That's a miss with the shield. Ah, very nice. Uh, well, your shield's now covered in poo. <laughs> David. I can, I can wipe that off on Chris. <laughs> David. Okay. Good news. That's a one. It gets thrown at your feet, so give me a dex check to make sure you don't slip in monkey poo. Okay. <laughs> All right. That will be 16 for the dex check. You are safe. And the Dwarven Cleric, two. You leap over the... Uh, ape pie that gets thrown at you. You guys all sprint into a much wider area. About a hundred yards ahead of you is a wagon and some kind of humanoid figure holding a large sickle. 
Should we go examine the wagon? You can cut the distance and the individual with the sickle will be in between you and the wagon. The individual with the sickle is a human, tanned, dark hair. Only a loincloth. So does he look like one of the hippies? He does not. No. He's still tan, but where they were blonde, this guy's dark-headed. He's a Greek. <laughs> and, and how tall is he? He's about man size, so about five and a half, six feet. Oh, okay. All right. The sickle is very imposing. Uh, he yells something, and the wagon, being towed by a donkey, picks up the pace, and he stands in between with his hand outstretched and says the word, Halt. I halt. Mm -hmm. So do I. Yeah. Does everybody... We cannot tell how big his penis is. So <laughs> but he's got a... He's got a sickle, so if you reach in there, you might be called Stumpy. <laughs> so, everybody stops, but do you slowly approach him to speak with him? Or just... Uh, free sure, him? I won't. Who wants I'll to go, uh, talk? go and talk? Yeah, I'll, I'll creep forward. Chris, Tyler? Yeah, Chris David Tyler. Would too. Okay, Chris, Tyler, and David, you guys go up and talk. The man continues to hold the sickle menacingly. He lets you get closer, but then he says halt again. Are Who we wants within to... talking distance now? You are within talking distance. Yeah. Who wants to do the persuasion role as they talk to this guy? Uh, mm. I'll give it a, sh a shot. I'm, I'm a little... <laughs> uh, and you're covered in monkey poo. So. Yeah. Okay, David. Uh, I'll, I'll raise a hand and say hail. <laughs> okay, give me your persuasion. Okay. Uh, persuasion, that'll be, uh, yeah, that's a big whopping 13. <laughs> he doesn't seem impressed, but he's not stabbing you. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, I, I say hail and, uh, and ask, and who might you be, sir? I am Bert. Bert? Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> I am Gobi, and this is my entourage. <laughs> Gesundheit. <laughs> we come. We come to this land seeking chocolate. <laughs> you are late. We're late. You were supposed to be here two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Oh, um... two weeks ago. Is thou deaf? <laughs> uh, I say no. I was just pondering for a second and uh, I turn check <laughs> to the others <laughs> okay yeah that's a 10. <laughs> he's done with you odd he looks at Christopher mm -hmm. so looks our at reason... Tyler because <laughs> he can smell you <laughs> you what do you want we were sent here after the the person who was meant to collect the chocolate was didn't show up on our end so we were sent to follow up and try and get things going again can you help us with that persuasion check all righty persuasion that is a two minus one i was gonna offer to assist but <laughs> <sighs> Do you have the jewelry? Um, I'm going to turn around and look at Carrie and being like, you've got that jewelry. Uh, Christopher, where's that stainless steel egg? I got it here. I'm hiding it in one of my special pockets. Oh, what is the bulge? <laughs> <laughs> the bulge? This nice, I take it out. It's a stainless steel egg. We found it in this uh, in this funny cave with a bunch of dinner bones, or we had had a human skulls, unknown skulls, and ram skulls. I hope you did not slay chocolate. Uh, Tyler, he he says, "I will 
I will give you your stuff for the egg. Yeah, you happy to give it up, Chris? Yep, that's that's okay. If we get our chocolate, I think that's a well worthy trade. You I hand it over. A deal, Matt. He waves you guys forward. You guys continue to follow the ruts. You wind through the jungle and you find yourself at the back of the village. Everybody is back at the village. Bert says, go over there. Goes over and he talks to his people. They come out with three crates. You give me the egg, I give you the whip. I mean, the box. <laughs> <laughs> fair deal? Yeah, that seems pretty yep. fair. Yep. Bert takes the egg. Looks at Chris. <laughs> Deal. Uh, everybody insight check. Okay. <laughs> I think we're getting the short end of the deal here. <laughs> 18. 13. Uh, 6. 18. 19. 15 and above. Uh... These guys are just pigs. This place wasn't attacked at all. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are just filthy individuals. Uh, those below are too focused on the chocolate and wondering, why the hell did we give up a stainless steel egg for this stupid chocolate? Uh, the chocolate is heavy. So it is. it has been processed. Uh, so clerics of the cheese will not be happy. Or no, they will be happy. No, yeah, I'm <laughs> fine. It's, it was the hippies that weren't happy. Who, who wants to D12 against me to see if Captain Candy stuck around? Oh, no. <laughs> in, in fact, why, why don't we make... Why don't we take a little bit of chocolate and cheese and make a chocolate cheesecake? <laughs> nice. Sure. Okay. Yeah, who, except got... we need more than chocolate and cheese to make a chocolate cheesecake. Who's got the guts? Uh, I rolled. I rolled a ten. I rolled a six. Captain Candy remains, however, thanks to Captain Crash there, will the longboat be able to survive the short distance out there? Since Christopher wrecked it, Christopher what is gets a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher, roll your survival check to see if this thing's going to get you out there. Five. <laughs> Anybody want to make a guess at who's paddling out? <laughs> I think I will make Chris uh, swim I out on his own. <laughs> I, I will allow you to send somebody to swim out to the ship to get a second one. I will allow somebody to make a roll to try and repair the boat. Or you may all just load up the boat with a chocolate, inverted, and swim on out to the boat. Well, I have a lousy athletic, so I don't want to swim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a dwarf. Yeah. I'll try and swim. Okay. I'm pretty yeah. strong. Uh, what's your best attribute? Strength. Yeah. Well, with D20 and add your strength if you're swimming out there. 15. Oh, are you wearing armor while you're doing it? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing armor. What ah! kind of armor? Chain mail? Yeah, that's going to be disadvantage. <laughs> okay. Uh, 18 still. Tyler, were you going out too? Um, nah, nah. Uh, you guys watch Christopher, Bob, and flail and spit water up. Uh, you notice the people on the ship are also watching it. No one's lifting a damn finger to help him out. <laughs> However, after much trial and tribulation, Christopher washes the poop off his leg. Yay! And gets to the ship. Uh, Captain Candy is somewhat upset at the loss of her uh, charge, uh, but they do have a second vessel out there. She asks Christopher, are you going to take it out there or should I have my men do it? Have I'll, men I'll do take it. it out there. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Survival roll. All right. 16. 
having learned from his shortcomings earlier, Christopher, reaching out to both sides and pulling the oar, does actually make it in. Christopher, do you want to beach it hard like you did last time or just kind <laughs> no. of float on in? When I I'm see gonna... Christopher's uh, the one rowing, I'm going to wait out till at least knee deep. <laughs> <laughs> and so make stop sure we it. don't smash this boat up. Christopher, nobody <laughs> trusts you anymore. <laughs> but at least you smell better. <clears throat> you guys load up the uh, processed cacao on the ship. You sail on out to Captain Candy. And you have successfully completed your mission in about yeah. two hours. Nice. You also... Killed a dragon. So <laughs> a, rare, a rare feat indeed for third level PCs. Well, it's a baby dragon. I mean, a, a technically well, a baby not, dragon is a dragon. Let's not belittle but, our accomplishments here. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, who who lost the most hit points during this? I battle? did. Okay. I almost died. Um, so. I went from twenty eight down to six. I, so I went. I went from. I went from twenty four to four. So yeah, yeah I think I it's went from I, I twenty think... to five. Twenty eight to six. I think was I the lost twenty two. So that's uh... wow. <laughs> it's a wonder any of us survived. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, Ken, what did you think of the scenario as played? Okay. <clears throat> what was your favorite part? Uh. I don't, I don't know. Not not really sure. I mean, I was expecting, just from the way it was described, we're expecting something's a little more jokey. I mean, it was jokey, just in a different way. Yeah, there there but are. That's why I was, I was thinking, like you know, you have like maybe you have like chocolate monsters or something. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Uh, but no, it's a regular black dragon. Yeah, you did not go to the right part of the island. <laughs> there wow, are, are chocolate there monsters. Are actually. Yeah, are there? Four, 14 encounters. Uh, the wow. mud methods were made out of molten chocolate. Okay, so you did have some chocolate monsters. I did. Oh, okay. But, okay. but being a sandbox, I allowed you guys to choose which way you went. Uh, David, what'd you think? I thought it was good. I thought it was good. You know. What's your favorite part? Um, pretty much. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Probably the the cave conundrum with uh, the dragon poop and Christopher King going uh, knee deep into it. So. <clears throat> the dice giveth, the dice taketh away. Tyler, yeah, what'd you think? Yeah, I thought it was great. I had fun. What was your favorite part? Um, I think the um, investigating substances was uh, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to Captain Liquor here in a second. <laughs> John, what about you? Oh, I liked it. I had a good time. Uh, and um, uh, favorite part: fighting the dragon was fun. Interacting with the hippies was fun. Yeah. Good. Okay, Christopher, what you got? <laughs> uh, for me, I I liked it quite a lot. It was uh, nice, interesting, and quite concise. And favorite part, I'd say, was a. Uh, performing uh, impossible feats like climbing down the obsidian uh, ledge with just my hands and not uh, swimming in full chain mail. <laughs> those, those two were remarkably unlikely, and yes, you were correct. Terry, what'd you think? Best part? <laughs> yeah, it could have been your friend. Okay, <laughs> now the be now the important part, Ken. What did I screw up? Um, hmm. uh, I don't know. Not having a a better reason um, for everybody to be for the town to be in bad shape, aside from they're just slobs. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy that. I, I, I could have had them attacked by the lollipop wielding bugbears. That's fair. They or have them or have them or have the methods, the chocolate methods, or maybe like they something happened to the chocolate, they had to go fight the chocolate methods to use them for more chocolate. That's true. Uh hey. the carry the hurricane was on the northeast corner where the wreck of the heart, Captain Hart's vessel was at. 
there was a hurricane, but it hit the north side. Uh, David, what did I fuck up? Uh, me. <laughs> when a, when I think John and hit. Tyler would also agree. <laughs> yes, John would agree with that. <clears throat> Uh, no, I, no, I really didn't, uh, see any real flaws. I mean, I'm, I might be like, uh, Ken, I was just like thinking, you know, uh, a little more, uh, Willy candy Wonka-ish. related stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there, I, the bugbears wielding the giant lollipops as, uh, Mace or morning stars would have been cool to throw at you. Nice. Tyler, what did I screw up? Um, yeah, nothing really jumps out at me. It was uh... the answer is I didn't kill any of you. That's what I screwed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, you you made it dangerous without doing the killing thing, which is always nice mm-hmm. as a player. Um... Yes. <laughs> was it for lack of trying? <laughs> it was Dice awesome. man, you guys suck at rolling. Uh, John, <laughs> what did I do wrong? Well, I'm not sure you did anything wrong. I almost died, but that was because of bad dice rolling. That wasn't anything you did intentionally. Damn um. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Chris, aside from smearing you with poop, what did I do wrong? I don't know. I think that poop was actually a pretty good plus there. Uh, <laughs> I'd say maybe a nicer hint on the on what that egg was, unless, of course, we just bad rolling. Uh, yes. The egg is a magical item used by bards uh, that causes distraction, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you know, yes. the wizard that had detect magic did not cast that. <laughs> yep, and it would have been detected as magic. So. Oh, oh, yeah, and why didn't the wizard have unprecedentation? Uh, because Frank, Frank had the, yeah, Frank I, created uh, the character. Just would have ruined the plot, I guess. That's, that's right. Well, I, I noticed uh, Carrie and I uh, a couple weeks ago played in a one shot where we also got uh, covered in poo carrying barrels of liquor across town. So you just like uh, crapping on everyone. He does. <laughs> that, that, that is his mode. Uh, yeah. That yeah is try an urban mode. adventure. Urban adventures <laughs> always get emptied on everywhere. Yes. Folks, uh, been murder ho- Go ahead, John. Oh, just one, one quick thing. Uh, I, it was never explained why the uh, the the islanders did not uh, hand over the chocolate initially. You didn't find them. Oh. Oh, okay. Because yeah. the shipwreck. Yeah. Yeah. The, the okay. Captain Hart's shipwreck and his crew are in the northeast corner. Uh, the hippies ah. are not affiliated with these guys. Because man, that's just All wrong. Right. Uh, by, by the way, um, this is not directly related to anything you did in the game, but from the way people are talking, it seems like murder hobo means something other than just, you know, the D&D term murder hobo. So, right. Like, what is we, it? Uh, I don't know, David. How would you describe it? I, uh, I would say are, are you like different... a club or something? Or a... Oh, no. Uh, I... it, it's pretty much... Uh, yeah, it, it always usually ends up with somebody in the party screwing over the rest of the party. So that that that's pretty much the spirit of Murder Hobo. Yeah, or, I mean, usually or, we're looking at the clock. Right, I mean, I know what Murder Hobo minutes. means in the D&D game, but it's, it sounds like you're referring to something more than that. This is uh, this is an organization where we play. We do one shot. So you have an organization started. called the Murder Hobos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Murder Hobo mm-hmm. Inc. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got a store and, and podcast and everything. And it, it, nor, we were, normally, normally the the dungeon master finds some way to screw over the players. I guarantee. <laughs> Although the players have been known to really shock. Oh them. yeah, D- yes, De- derail the dungeon master's adventure. That happens too. That yeah, happens that frequently, happens more frequently than we thought. Folks, this has been Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, thanks for joining us. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D and D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our crap, the link is down there somewhere. Most importantly, if you want to join us on uh, Murder Hobo Inc., either the one shots on Saturday or the talk shows on Tuesday. Hit us up, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. We will get you on there. Uh, next Saturday is campaign, so that's out. This Tuesday, however, is open. We'll be discussing magical items. So if you're interested, that's a one hour show. Uh, if you want personalized dice, go on over to Twitter. 
check out at Pirate Dog Dice. And if you want to make your game smell way better than Chris and Carrie, go over to <laughs> iFishGames.com and check out their Adventure Sense. They have 60 cents. Uh, other than Putrid Sewers, most of them are pretty nice. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, and live from Murder Hobo Con, join us tomorrow night, 8 p.m. for Cinder Fella. I believe John is going to be one oh, of Oh, the- I'm definitely going to be there. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen and lady, everybody give a big old dating game kiss and wave, and let's get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you.